What's going on everybody? Cody from Motorcycle MD. Today I'm going to bring you guys another video on a very specific tuning technique that I want to show you guys. It's called the idle drop procedure. This is typically done on any carburetor job that you do. Hopefully it's being done at the shop that you take your bike to to clean the carb out. I'm going to be showing us how to do this specific procedure on this small beautiful TRX 90. Um, it's a single carb system. It uses a D-style mixture screw adjuster which you need a special tool in order to adjust it with. But sometimes you'll find carburetors with flat style, flat bill, flat head on the adjuster itself. In most cases, brand new bikes that get shipped to shops, especially ours here in Virginia, we're at sea level. Okay, a lot of the bikes that we are getting sent to us, but if they're carbureted, are coming out of the box very lean. Okay, this is for a number of reasons, all right? They want them to be economically friendly, EPA is setting a certain standard for what's coming out of the exhaust. And they're also just giving us a generally tuned carburetor for the masses. Okay, they're not going to specifically tune every carb for every state that they're sending them to. So they allow us to do certain procedures to adjust the mix to get it to run better. Okay, a lot of times brand new carbs that you buy from your local friendly parts store are also coming just as lean as they were when they were on the bike to begin with. So the idle drop procedure is a way to adjust that mixture to get peak performance out of the carb. You're gonna get super, super smooth idling, and the bike's just gonna sound better and perform better overall with this type of tune. Now, normally this type of adjustment is done on a carburetor that's just been cleaned or it's running well. But if your bike runs like crap because the carburetor needs to be cleaned, you're gonna find that this adjustment may put a Band-Aid over the issue that you might be facing but it's not going to clean the carb out. It's not going to fix all of your issues. If the carb is dirty, the carb is dirty. You just got to get it cleaned out and then perform this adjustment. So one other key note that I will let you know before you even try to attempt this on your bike is that single carb and twin carb stuff is a lot easier to understand and really hear it out. As you get better in your skill, if you're a technician or you're just a guy trying to fix his bike, inline four carbs or split sixes or whatever, can be a little bit more difficult to really hear and understand what's going on, but I'm pretty confident once you understand the basics of what I'm about to do on this smaller 90, it's gonna make total sense when it comes to you dialing in each individual carb on your bike. Now, a couple of situations that you can run into before you start asking a bunch of questions, this might answer them. One, if you are making this adjustment on the carb and you are experiencing no change whatsoever, no change in the RPM, increasing or decreasing. Remember, this is an auto drop procedure. It'll make way more sense when we get into it. But if nothing is changing, whether you turn that thing all the way in and then finally the bike wants to cut out and die or you back it out and nothing is really changing at all, more than likely there is some clogging taking place in that mixture port, okay? Whether it's the tapered needle that you're actually adjusting, the port transfer ports inside the carb, the slow circuit mixtures, the choke circuit for specific carbs, it's probably experiencing some clogging, so you adding in fuel or taking away air or vice versa is not making a difference because the hole that is actually flowing stuff in and out is probably clogged up. Your mixture adjustment will make no difference at all. Second thing is, if you are gonna make this adjustment, this is changing the ratio of air to fuel inside of that mixture system. Okay, if you're in California and you get smog testing done, I'm sorry, we don't get that done here, okay? So this is gonna change that, and this may uh, cause the bike to run how you tune it, really. You can make it run as rich as you want or as lean as you want. The idea is to find the best case scenario on both ends. But again, this may affect exhaust gas analyzing tools if you're in a state that does that nonsense. And third, you more than likely will need a special tool to be able to do this. Again, I was mentioning the D-shaped style mixture screw. Honda does have special tools for that. They're pretty expensive. You can find them somewhere on the internet. They may be half the price. You can also check out places like Motion Pro, um, and they sell adapters and all kinds of different stuff. Honestly, the best ones I've ever used have come from Honda. I've tried Motion Pro, I've tried k &L, different different types of things, and nothing really comes close to the A, the reliability and the functionality of the Honda ones. I'm not just tooting Honda's horn, but you get what you pay for, okay? Like I said, I spent like a hundred and something dollars on a on a Motion Pro setup, and I really just dislike it. It's probably my most least used tool out of everything I have. On some bikes, they are a lot more difficult to get to. On like the Nighthawk 750, you're really trying to angle you and your tool around in the best possible way to get to certain carbs buried inside on top of the motor. 
so before you get started, unless it's a flat tip style head on the mixer screw, which are super awesome and easy to use, if you have a D-shaped style, you're gonna need the tool. And I'm sure someone on YouTube will show you how to make one, but I'm not. And the last thing I wanna talk about before we dive in, if you're experiencing any type of adjusting scenarios where you have more than one carb, if you're finding that a lot of the mixtures are not similar, they're not all bam, 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 all three across the board or two out, two and a half, one and a half, whatever you're doing, if they're not all the same, that should common sense tell you something, okay? If you can have one at one and a half out and it runs great, and you can have the other one at three out and it runs great, you can either leave it there or you can think about it and realize that that one that's uh, requiring less or more fuel or less or more air is probably experiencing some type of resistance in the carburetor, okay? Some kind of clogging, something. The air and fuel mixture coming out of one carb or two carbs or three or four is variable because of certain situations, restrictions in certain jets, restrictions in certain transfer ports. Um, there's a number of things, okay? So it's not so uncommon for all of them to be exactly three out, three out, three out, three out, unless you did a phenomenal job on all jetting and airflow is perfect. But if you're experiencing some that are between two and three and you're in between each one on how many turns out or in you are, I wouldn't stress it too much. Don't overthink it. Don't beat a dead horse. Run it. If you can even get your bike to respond properly with this type of procedure, you're gonna love the way it runs, all right? I do this on every carb clean that I do, and it really wakes these things up and make them run better than they ever did, even when they came fresh out of the box. So, enough talking about it. Idle drop procedure, let's go ahead and knock it out on this TRX and see if we can hear the changes that we're trying to make and really understand what the idle drop means when it comes to that mixture adjustment. Woohoo! So I just recently cleaned out the carb on this nice 2012 TRX 90X. Now, two places I'd really like for us to focus our attention on this particular carb. Okay, one being our idle screw adjustment, which is that Phillips head right there, okay? Right in the center of the carb, this moves the slide up and down, not this one. This one does nothing besides hold this stay for the choke. And that tube right there, okay, this tube is our fuel trim mixture adjuster. This is where we will be doing our quote unquote idle drop procedure from. On any of your carbs, you're gonna find a place to adjust the mixture somewhere on it. It's either gonna be on the back side of the carb, on the bottom of the carb facing down, maybe forward of the bowl, on the side here on some carbs, on the side here on some carbs, mainly where you can access them, hopefully, but most of the time you're gonna find them probably on the bottom of the carb facing downward or just directly into the side of the carb. This is a completely different carb than in any motorcycle per se, but again, the fundamentals are just spot on. Now, if yours does have a tamper proof cover over the mixture screw, I have a video on removing that. There are plenty of them all over the internet. Um, the reason why they put them there is because they don't really want you screwing with it all the time because of VPA stuff. Okay, anyways, so well, I'll be using my Honda and that's the part number for it. You'll find that it's actually really expensive, but you can probably find the same thing. It's a nice adjusting long tool shaft with a little spring on the end, which allows me to flex it and move where I want it to be. D-shaped head, because that's what the top of the head of the adjuster looks like. Uh, letter D. Get in the hoe. Get in the hoe. But I've already adjusted this, right? I've already made it run like a perfect four-wheeler should all right this is a relatively cold start room temperature I, I, I would consider it cold so right now no joke we will want to perform this with the bike relatively warm okay if you're doing a cold adjustment you're gonna find that it might change as the bike warms up because things need to start getting hot so it can do its job a lot better and stuff can get atomized better um, the combustion chamber can heat to proper temperature so it's doing what it needs to do all in the right time. Okay, so fresh carb clean. It's already been adjusted, but we're going to take it out of adjustment and then put it back in so you can kind of hear the different spectrums of that idle drop procedure. So while this thing warms up, the goal of the idle drop procedure, per se, when it comes down to actually what you're doing, you're adjusting the mixture screw for the idle circuit. 
which also dictates what happens on D-cell as well in some cases. Backfiring, fouling out, whatever the case may be. Adjusting the mixer on this car, which is a fuel mixture screw, is locate the highest idle while it's idling, obviously, until it drops off. That drop-off point, whether it's being too rich or too lean in, in, in that mixture adjustment, is the idle drop. Okay, what we're gonna do is once we find that point where it reaches its highest idle, it's running, it's telling you I freaking love being right here with that mixture you're giving me, and we knock it out of that adjustment and drop the idle, which we'll hear, that locates where we are with that, how far in or how far out that mixture screw should be for it to run best. And what I mean by that is as soon as it drops off of that highest point of idle, that best running condition, the idle drop tells us, okay, let's go back to where that was. Once we locate the drop in RPM or in the way it runs, we can then go back, we can kind of backpedal and say, okay, that's too far, or that's too far in or too far out. Let's bring it back to where it was at that highest idle. So we're idle dropping the mixture to bring it back in to its higher idle, and then after that, setting the overall RPM with the idle adjustment screw. So what I do to start out is I'm gonna put this thing at a very low idle. This is just me adjusting the main idle adjustment to have it idle as low as possible. Because when the RPMs are low, you can hear more fluctuation in it. Okay, so I'm gonna drop them down. That's pretty low. Okay, I'd say it's probably around 500, 600 RPM. Maybe a little bit faster. All I'm gonna do is locate that hole and put this in there. And we're gonna start by turning the mixture screw all the way in. Okay, I'm just gonna go all the way in until it seats. I'm not gonna snap it off inside the car because that's not what people should do. We're just gonna go in there and let it go until it seats and I feel resistance. What we're probably gonna hear is the bike wanna choke up real bad and then just shut off. Okay, what this mixture screw is actually doing is it's not a jet, it's just a metering device. So if you take a hole and put a tapered needle inside of that hole, it's gonna slowly shut off fuel into the point where it closes that hole up completely and no fuel is getting to the auto mixture. All right, let's turn it all the way in and see what happens. It's a half turn in. Starting to choke up a little bit. Half in, it's getting real bad. Full in, that should be, yeah, right there it stopped. Just shut the bike off completely. Okay, now we know that we are all the way seated on the mixture screw. So most fuel mixture screws are gonna be between, I would like them to be between two to even three and a half out in some cases, okay? If you turn your mixture screw anything further than three and a half out, you're gonna risk the opportunity for that mixture screw to actually fall out of the car. Because there is a spring behind that mixture screw holding tension on the thread to keep it in there. All right, so anything past three and a half, it's time to start making jet changes to bring that mixture screw adjustment a little bit further into maybe two to three turns out of its resting seated position like it's in now. All you're really doing is feeding it more fuel into that air fuel mix for the idle circuit. Don't get too hung up on, well, mine's not three and a half out, it's best at two and a half. Well, great, you found what it's best at, stay there. I'm just saying, don't go over three and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and take it because I know it's not gonna run very well on half. I might even struggle getting it started because right now we have it extremely lean. We cut off all fuel access into that idle mixture, okay? Let's go ahead and turn it one and a half turns out. Handle here, I actually have a little dial where I can adjust it and read how many turns out I'm doing. So we'll do, there's one full turn there, there's a half. This bike should be able to idle. Okay, it's kind of rough. The amount of time it takes for the RPMs to return back to idle is a little bit delayed. Finally, it finds idle right there. What we want is a fast reaction and a fast drop back down to that perfect idle. We don't want it to drop below idle RPM. We want it to just kind of sit right there once I'm done with the throttle. So we're at one and a half turns out, which is 
kind of still lean. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep increasing this by half turns or quarter turns until we hear the RPMs reach its highest point. It's a half turn and let it take time to respond. There's another half turn. You can hear it's kind of erratic now. It's getting worse. Let's go a little bit more out. Now it's real rich. Kind of blubbering. I know it's way rough. Way rough. So, let's turn it back in. See if we can't get it to sound really, really smooth. And increase the RPM a little bit. Sounds a little bit better right there. All right, now I'm going back lean again. So our sweet spot is between here, I'm gonna back it back out now. There's a quarter turn. Right there. Here it went, it kind of picked up a little bit, and now it's just kind of holding right there. If I turn it just a small, a small quarter turn. There's no real change at all. That's that's our plateau. Okay, when you can adjust it very small this way or this way, and there's no change, you're pretty much right there. All right, so that's it. Idle drop procedure is done. It's running phenomenally where I want it to be at. Um, we're able to obtain that high idle, obtain the idle drop, figure out where it's not going to run well where it's not responding well. Really, you're just tuning your ears into how the RPM is responding. The RPM is pretty much telling you what the motor likes, what it doesn't like. Too much air, too much fuel, or lack thereof. So, if we think about it, if you are only able to turn the mixture screw out, maybe a one full turn on a fuel, I'm talking about fuel mixture screws right now, because there are, like I said earlier, air mixture screws. You gotta figure out what carb you have and what the book is calling it what the manual is calling it because air screws you're not going to be turning them out three turns you're going to be turning them out may maybe one full turn or one half turn okay you're adding air into the mix so if on your fuel mixer screw you're only able to turn it out a half or uh, one full turn and you've been doing some jetting right that's telling you that the idle jet's probably a little bit too rich because you want to bring it away from that one and in between three so in between one turnout and three turns out is pretty much your sweet spot. If you're on the tall spectrum of three and a half to four, it's telling you that your idle jet's probably a little bit too lean. Cause when you're trying to add fuel into it, add fuel into that mix with this adjustment, bringing it out, causes you to risk actually dropping the mixture screw out of the carb altogether. Because when it comes to bolts and nuts on motorcycles and cars, unfortunately they do not tighten up. As they vibrate, they loosen up. But that's it guys, idle drop procedure done. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it helped you out, if you used it, if it worked, did it make a change, make it better, make it worse, comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Also, be sure to check out the Inner Circle membership. Tons of great content's being shared on there. Private group for members who wanna really dive in and learn something more about their bike when it comes to carburetors, motor overhauls, you name it, we're talking about it. Love to see you guys on there as well. But regardless, Cody from Motorcycle MD bringing you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. I'll see you guys around. Later. Later.